Hello. Today's story comes from Minnesota and Usta. It is a bit triggering, so I'm putting that trigger warning out there right now. And uh, without any further ado, let's get into it. 420 2022 was a day of celebration for many, but for Nikki Lenway, it's unforgettable but not in a good way. On that day, she survived a murder attempt. She was a couple times, and in order to get to that point, let's jump back in time to 2012. In 2012, Nikki met a man named Tim Omaker, Master Tim, a master of Taekwondo, at a gym that she was a member of. And he was very interested in her. He's a few years older than her as well. And he pursued her. She was not interested at first because he was egotistical. He was basically a narcissist, but he was love bombing her. He was really pouring it on thick. And so she agreed to go out with him. And she found that she enjoyed his company and before long they were in a committed relationship this was amazing for mr tim master tim as he had up until that time had a revolving door to his bedroom and even kept a purple light on his porch that he would flick on according to neighbors inviting the women in it wasn't long before his old bad boy routine came to light again and she has no idea how it escalated to the point where he would be physically abusive towards her and also in the bedroom abusive. By 2015, she realized that her relationship had become a nightmare for her and she decided she wanted to leave Tim, but she made the mistake of telling him that she was leaving. When she went out the front door, he grabbed her by her ponytail and yanked her back in, hauled her to the bedroom. Afterwards, she bailed, and not long after, Tim brought in a young woman, just turned 18 years old. Her name was Colleen Larson. Colleen had been a student of Master Tim's since she was like 12 years old, and she had a major crush on him. She was, oh, just so enamored of him that she basically turned herself into his maid, etc., while she was renting out a room at his house and it wasn't too long before the two of them became a couple at that time when colleen had first moved in nikki discovered that she was pregnant and nikki wanted to keep her baby she also felt that tim had a right to know and she wanted him to be a part of the baby's life when tim found out about the pregnancy though he was not happy. Tim did come around and decided that he did want to be a part of this child's life on his terms and when convenient for him. Colleen took a lot of the parenting onto her shoulders. Nikki needed to work. She was a forensic scientist, a forensic investigator for the Minneapolis Police Department. It was just really convenient that Colleen as well as Tim were available to take care of the baby whenever she had to be at a crime scene. Everything was going kind of okay, kind of hunky-dory until 2017 when Nikki met a man named Donovan Ford who was an officer with the Minneapolis Police Department and the two of them hit it off and once Tim got wind of this, he went ballistic. He was jealous as can be. He started trying to win Nikki back. Not ever. Uh Uh-uh. Then Tim decided to start attacking. He would call Donovan at work. And then when that wasn't enough, Tim even filed against Nikki, claiming that she assaulted him, that she ran over his foot at one of the child handoffs. But at trial, it all came out that Tim was the aggressor. Nikki was the victim. Nikki ended up being acquitted and her record was expunged. Judge awarded Nikki sole physical and legal custody, and Tim had to have supervised visits at FamilyWise, which is a center that facilitates these things and even has 
more than one entrance so that parents don't have to see each other when they're doing the child handoff. On April 20th, 2022, Nikki was on her way to the Family Wise Center to pick up Callahan, who is her son that she shares with Tim. Callahan, at this point, was five years old. And Nikki was walking up to the center when all of a sudden, someone clad in all black with a hoodie went running up to her and pulled out a you know what and and Nikki went down and the person started to leave but then saw Nikki get back up so they ran back at Nikki and again and then they took off at that exact time thank goodness a good Samaritan named Emily Clancy was at the intersection right there in front of the center and she saw this whole thing happen while she was stopped at a red light. So when the light turned, she pulled into the Family Wise parking lot and went up to Nikki, who at this point had already tried to get in the front doors of Family Wise, couldn't get in because they immediately went on lockdown as soon as there was the outside. Then Nikki tried calling 911 and she didn't realize that the wound to her neck made it so she couldn't speak. So she called 911 and could only kind of garble. But at that point, Emily had gotten to her and Emily took over the call to 911 and Emily escorted Nikki to her car and held a sweater to Nikki's neck, basically keeping Nikki alive until the first responders got there and once the first responders got there they had Nikki actually walk with their aid but walk to the ambulance and then from there she went to the hospital the police of course got the story that Nikki had been there to pick up her son and so they spoke to Tim who was like oh I don't have anything to do with any of this and you know it probably has something to do with Nikki's caseload probably something to do with her work and the police asked him whether the Jeep that he drove to Family Wise was the only vehicle he had and he said no this isn't my only vehicle I also have a Dodge Challenger and he says that's the only other thing he had this is gonna come back next day when Nikki came around she wasn't able to speak but she could write and so when she was talking to the police she said that she knew that Tim had to be behind it and she also noted that she felt that the person that had run up on her was a female so the police went over the surveillance videos of the whole area and they were able to see the person who did that to Nikki had gotten into a black Ram truck then they discovered that Tim had a black Ram truck registered to him the Ram truck in the video had no markings and also no license plates. They brought Tim in for questioning and showed him a picture and he's like, oh, that's not my truck. My truck has Superman decals on it and my truck has license plates. So obviously this isn't mine. But police had been able to get information from the truck because the truck has Wi-Fi and stuff like that. And anyway, they were able to find out that that truck had been there at the time of the attack on Nikki. So once they confronted Tim with that and with the fact that they had traced the truck and knew that earlier in the day Tim had gone to KFC, the drive through and he's on video there driving that truck and it has no decals on the doors and it's got no plates on it. He had altered the truck before the attack. So then they said, we know you were inside. We, we know you were with your son. Who had access to your truck? So then he said, Colleen, who was Colleen Larson. At this point, she is 24 years old and she's deeply under Tim's influence. She even calls him master at home. She gets brought in and she ends up saying that she and Tim planned this together that Tim had said that if Nikki was out of the way, Colleen would be able to adopt Callahan and be his mom. She ended up being 
convicted and getting 16 and a half years. Tim also was convicted. He got 18 years, which was the maximum. And this does have a happy ending because Donovan and Nikki got married. They are raising Callahan and Nikki and Donovan are expecting a baby girl. That's a very happy ending if you ask me.